What's going on, everybody? Hey, guys. Welcome back to East Africa with Willie and Rachel. We are super excited to be sitting with you again, praise yes, God. Yes, we are. So, Rachel, today we are starting to talk about how to remove the weeds. Mm -hmm. That's what we're calling this. And we're basically talking about how to produce fruit in your life in any given area, but specifically, we're going to be talking about Luke chapter 8 and Mark chapter 4. You can also find this parable in Matthew chapter 13. And this is where Jesus gives the parable where the sower sows the word. Mm -hmm. And the magnificent thing about this is this is dealing with the heart. This is yeah. talking about the word of God entering our heart and it producing fruit. Right. And he says something in Mark chapter 4, I think it's verse 13, where he says to his disciples, he said, if you don't understand this parable, right. how then can you understand any of the parables? Yeah. And it's just showing the significance he puts on it. And again, that's because this isn't, this isn't just about finances or, or marriage right. or, or any promise that God could give us. It's not about one promise. This is about literally your heart, where the word of God meets your heart and how it is to, uh, the process of what's going to yeah. take place in, in it producing fruit in your life, because mm -hmm. that's what God's about. Yeah. John 15, Jesus said this, by this, my father's glorified that you bear much fruit. He desires for us to be fruitful in life. Mm -hmm. Uh, John 10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. He's about us producing fruit, but it's not the self-help fruit of this world. It is that fruit where, yeah. where God's spirit is alive on the inside of us. And it's, it's bringing about things to where we're not being hindered by the natural right. things of this world. We're able to live above them, live with a fire. Praise God. Amen. And I like that you said it's literally talking about every area of life. This yes. is not one thing that it's just talking about. It's literally talking about if you want fruit in every area of your life, so many of us can look and see an area of our life where we're struggling, um, where we're having issues, yeah. where we would like to see things change. Yeah. And this is the key. This is why Jesus said, if you, if you don't understand this, it's going to be hard for you to get Completely. anything else. Because this is literally every area of our lives, mm -hmm. we can produce fruit if we apply this Absolutely. to that area. Absolutely. And so we're going to jump in here and I want to read from Luke chapter eight, verse 14, because we're going to, we're going to focus on Jesus's, uh, explanation of what happens when our hearts have weeds in it and mm -hmm. weeds, uh, we're going to get into this, but it's signifying other things that grow up and begin to choke the word, choke the, the, the fruitfulness of the word from, from producing in our lives. And he says this in Luke chapter eight, verse 14. Now the ones that fell among thorns, and this is talking about the word of God being sown into our hearts are those who, when they have heard go out and are choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life and bring no fruit to maturity. Yeah. And this is a picture, Rachel, of like, if you have a garden, mm -hmm and you sow good seed in that garden. So let's say you plant cucumbers and a cucumber is coming up. If, if you allow the weeds to be in there also, that, those weeds will literally take the nourishment right. that is supposed to be going to that cucumber seed and it will choke them. It, mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's like something else is there that needs to be removed mm -hmm. so that the natural process of fruitfulness can happen. And I like this because this is a picture of, this is not about just works. This is not about going and impressing God or something like that. Mm -hmm. This is not about, a lot of people are stuck in their prayer closet, Rachel, to where they are like, like, Lord, why is like my life not becoming more fruitful? Why do I have all these problems that are, you know, this and that trying to get God to do things mm -hmm. where he's given us the process to bring about fruit in our life. Right. And the picture here of a garden, of your heart being a garden and allowing the natural process to take place, the supernatural natural process is something that a lot of believers don't grab a hold of. Mm -hmm. It's something that a lot of believers are constantly overlooking and they're asking God to kind of come in, intervene and take care of the weeds. But here's the thing, God has given us yeah. a free will. And if in your heart, if you want to allow certain weeds to grow along with the word of God and to choke it and to not produce fruit, God's not going to step in and make you do this. God's mm -hmm. not going to step in and take over and, and just make you this way or that way. It's, yeah. it's not make the you, way. Make you change or make yeah. things happen differently or make you 
do things in your life differently. He's not going to do He's that. He's not. If you look at from Genesis to Revelation, it's constantly this give and take with the Lord to where he is talking to mankind and he comes in like with King David, you see these, these uh, deep conversations that he's having right. with him, but it's always for David to respond mm -hmm. because that's true love. Like God didn't create us to be robots. You know, yeah. it says in uh, first Timothy chapter two, that he wishes none to perish, but mm -hmm. all come to, re to the, the revelation of him. So God wishes all for none to perish, but yet people go to hell every day mm -hmm. for rejecting Jesus. And that's not the will of God. Right. But he's not going to step in and make us robots. We have a big part to play in our relationship with God. But this is exciting to mm -hmm. me. This is something to where... I was raised in a setting to where I thought everything happened for a reason and God was out there just kind of manipulating every little thing. And so in my own, in my own mind, I don't think I ever put words on it, Rach, but I grew yeah. up thinking, what does it matter then? Right. Like seriously, what does it matter? Whether I do this or today or that today, I've received Jesus, I think as my yeah. Lord and savior to go to heaven one day, but there is no sufficiency yeah. for that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday type of a life. But I didn't think it mattered because I thought God kind of was just manipulating everything yeah. out there. When I started to see that God had given me a part to play, mm -hmm. that he said, your heart is going to be the way you want it to be. Like you have a say so. Mm -hmm. It put purpose in my life. Right. Like what I wake up and do each day, I know is going towards something. Mm -hmm. And if I want something to change in my life, I'm not always just attacking that thing. I'm not beating myself up about it. For instance, if I see an area where I'm uh, uh, immature, mm -hmm. I know that maturity is going to be about me changing my heart and allowing the word of God mm -hmm. to take root mm -hmm. and grow fruitfulness. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that's really good. So you have anything to add? <laughs> no, I just, I think it's, it's key. I mean, because we've actually personally been through so much change. Mm -hmm. And when I tell people, I'm like, you know, for me, the goal is to look back on each year mm -hmm. and be able to see change in my life. Absolutely. And to see fruit, mm -hmm. to see areas that at one point maybe I struggled with. And that could be just things like, you know, maybe it's self-control mm -hmm. or maybe it's, you know, being irritable with my kids. Yeah. And being able to look back each year and say like, oh, I saw so much progress in my life. Mm -hmm. I saw so much change. I saw fruit in this area Amen. because it is God's desire and will for us to continually yeah. be changing and yeah. continually be bearing fruit. Mm -hmm. And I find it so interesting that it says right here that the fruit that it says and bring no fruit to maturity. Yeah. So that's literally telling us that you can start in something completely the fruit can begin mm -hmm. but it never came to maturity yeah. and i actually have some fruit trees around here we have a few mango trees mm -hmm. and like this one in the back it's just not a good tree mm -hmm. it, the fruit comes it never grows big mm -hmm. i don't we don't actually know what's wrong with that mm -hmm. tree but the fruit never becomes nice now yeah. the one in the front the mango tree is amazing the mm -hmm. fruit the mangoes get like this big yeah they ripen you mm -hmm. know and they're super delicious to mm -hmm. eat but in our own lives we can start on a path we can see the beginning of change a lot of people receive jesus and they you know they see that yeah. those things in their life begin and then all of a sudden it's like nothing ever continues mm -hmm. or it, you don't put, you don't go any further. Yeah. That's a great point because a lot of people are left wondering then what's wrong with me. And the, the, the mm -hmm. fact is nothing's wrong with you. No one, like if, if you can see anything in a believer's life that yeah. they're producing fruit, they're no better than you. No. Like literally, like no. it's the same ground. It's up to it's us to exactly. tend it and to keep it. But God hasn't like done something for them that he's mm -hmm. not desiring to do, do for you. You're not like a second class Christian, a second rate Christian. Mm -hmm. All it is, is getting some yeah. things straight in our own heart to where the seed can go to work and do what it's supposed to do exactly. while it's not being choked by other exactly, things. Exactly. Yeah. Cause mm -hmm. the seed the will bear fruit. Yeah. It's a promise, Amen. but part of that is going to be up to us, you guys. You guys, we've been so blessed to be with you and we will see you next time. See you guys.